Thank you, everybody. It's good to see you guys. Thank you for joining us this morning. Praise God. Are you guys, uh, are you guys awake yet? <laughs> no? Still not awake? Well, I'm glad you did. Well, if you would all please uh, stand with me this morning, we're going to go before the Lord and we're going to worship. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you this morning, God, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, Father. Holy Spirit, we invite you this morning just to be here. I pray that as people walk through these doors, as our brothers and sisters come to worship with us this morning, Father God, I just pray that your spirit would fall. That your presence would move. God, I pray that your love, God, would just overflow in this place. I pray those that are seeking answers, God, that we would find you, God. Those that are seeking comfort, Father God, I pray that your spirit would comfort them. We need you, Father, as the world gets crazier and crazier, Father God, we need more of you. In your son's holy and precious mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' name. Thank you. 
Okay, go take a seat, please. Uh, in a matter of a few minutes, and we'll go through these 
desire to make a bigger one with more music and stuff behind it. But this, just to let you know what your youth did this weekend. Amen? All right, that's us leaving. Oh, I'm going to play by play. Okay. That's us hanging around with fire, singing Kumbaya. And singing another chorus of Kumbaya. <laughs> That's us getting ready for um, um, s'mores. All right. right there. That's some of the people who They went on a hike. They went on a hike. They went on a hike. That's the, that's the leader's leg. Right they went out of the tent. They were coming back from the hike. We have more pictures that we will show that was just more quick. This is
seven o'clock group makes it a full on 30 minute meal. You know, so. Uh, <laughs> but wherever, whichever one you feel free to go to, go to it and be blessed. They're going through this book called Don't Give the Devil a Seat at Your Table. And, and so many times we allow the enemy to have free rent in our minds. Yeah. And, and we allow the enemy to lie to us in our thinking process. Yeah. And we feel that we're stuck. And that's not true. When the Bible says he who, uh, uh, when the Bible said that Jesus has set us free, that we are free indeed. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so please come and out, ladies, for that. Uh, if you don't know the place, you can uh, talk to Sister Tina or connect one of the ladies, and maybe you could go with them and, and, and just be blessed. Amen. Amen. Uh, men, we have our men's gathering. This is this Saturday. This is the third Saturday of the month. We have our men's gathering. I'll be sending you guys a text message. If I do not have your number, please see me after church and I'll make sure to get your number so I can include you in that text message so you can know what our men's gallery is going to be and where it's going to be this week. Amen? Amen. And then we also have our, 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 our end of the month worship. How many of you guys like worship? Yes. Amen. There's something beautiful about it. Amen. And we have a worship night every last Sunday of the month. We have a worship night right here at the sanctuary, and all we do is sing, which is worship the Lord, okay. because He deserves to be praised. Yes. Amen. 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 And so that's every last Sunday of the month. We have our Wednesday night Bible study that's at at seven thirty. We'll be going through the Book of Matthew. Right now we're at Matthew nineteen, um, coming towards the end of it. So if you want to come next week, you can catch up and 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 enjoy along with us. The beautiful thing about the way we do. You ever sat in Sunday morning service and you wish you could ask the question? You're like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Can I ask you something? Well, Sunday morning is not the time for that. But on Wednesday, when we're going through the scriptures, if you're like, that doesn't make sense, Pastor. What does that mean? On Wednesdays, we give people an opportunity to ask a question or maybe share what the Lord has shown them through the verse. And so we're able to study the that's what the Bible tells us to study to show yourself yeah. approved of good workmanship, right? And divide the word of truth. And, and so we, we do that on Wednesday. And even before we do that, we do this other thing. And I know a lot of a lot of churches might have given up on it, but uh, I, I, until Jesus comes, we're still going to do it. Amen. And that's pray. That's right. At 6.30, we gather in the sanctuary to pray. This is what Jesus said. My house would be a house of fog machines. He said. he said, my house would be a house of amazing worship. No. He didn't even say my house would be a house of an amazing speaker. But he says, my house would be a house of prayer. And as churches, we need to get back to making this house a house of prayer. So we pray at 6 30. That's not the only time we ever pray. But on, on Wednesday nights, we gather here in the sanctuary, we pray as, as individuals, and then we come together the last 30 minutes and we lift one another's needs. That's what the Bible says to bear with one another. We bear their needs. What? Right, you're going through this? Okay, let me help you. And let me pray for you as we go along. Amen? Amen. So on Wednesdays, we have 6 30 uh, prayer and 7 30 Bible study. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. I'm a little tired today. I'm old. I didn't oh, realize that. Amen. Until you sleep on a cot for two nights. And then we're like, ooh, man, we're back with a little tight. But man, it was good. We had a really good time. Uh, these are some of our, our kids that went, or these are the kids that went to the to the, to the camping trip, guys, and just wave high. I'm not going to embarrass you too much. I'm not going to ask you. So, why don't you guys all come on stage? Speed. <laughs> and then you guys are all going to be like, oh, man. But the, these guys, they, they, they hung out with us. They got burned with us, man. We had a good time in the water. And, and so today what I wanted to do, and this is something that me and Evan were purpose to do, is we want to carry the same theme that we were talking about during the camp. You see, we were going through the story of Gideon. How many of you guys know the story of Gideon? Uh, it's more than the person that makes the Bible. Isn't there Gideon in the Bible? Uh, um, but 
that Gideon is a man from the Bible in the Old Testament. And so if I sound like I'm kind of being a little like a little bit like like I'm giving it to the younger people, it might be because I am. But I think you guys are young enough who were who didn't go to camp can grasp it. But you see this guy named Gideon, you can find his story in the book of Judges. Has anybody read the book of Judges before? Yes. Youth, teenagers, it's how many of you guys like soap operas, dramas, oh, yeah. Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago something else? Chicago. There's so many Chicago's. <laughs> you would think they would get that city right at one time. Place is falling apart. But if we love all these dramatic shows, read the Old Testament. You wouldn't want to, You don't need to watch any more dramatic videos again when you read that. Because yeah. there's so many crazy things in the Old Testament that you would be like, oh, that happens in the Bible? And so in, in, in this moment in, 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 in the book of Judges in chapter 6 and, and 7, we find the story of a man named Gideon. And, and, and you guys remember as Evan was opening up on, on, on Friday night and he was sharing with us uh, the choices that led them to this spot. You know, sometimes we think when we come to God that there still isn't some things, how am I, I want to say this in the right way, there's still some things, every, everything we choose has a, has a reaction to it. Yeah. If I choose in the summer, Not to brush my teeth. Uh -oh. Not to not to wash the mocos out of my eye. Not to there's consequences to that. What are the consequences? You wouldn't want to be close to me. You would keep your distance from me. There's consequences to the things we choose to do. The people of Israel found themselves in an area that was more foreign to them. And there was other people that had a different culture than theirs. And instead of staying true to what they know what to be right, they started to copy the same things the other people do. And we kind of get that same thing too. You ever hung out with people that have a different lingo for you than you? And you hung out with them more than two months? You'll start picking up their, their slang. We start be talking the way they're talking. Like I, I learned this word called cat. Did you guys know that there's a word called cat? <laughs> that, that's no cat. I still don't understand how they mean it, but there's a word called cat, and it's not a baseball cat. Surprisingly, it's not a bullet either. Not a busted cat. It's not even that. <laughs> Apparently, this means a lie or something, right? There'd be no cat, like no lying or something. I don't know how they got that. But they got there. They, they arrived there. No cat. <laughs> That's how old I am. I didn't even know cat was a thing. But uh, so so they, they started to mingle in with this other culture. They started picking up the way these other people live their life. And that wasn't the way God called them. When God called Israel, he called them his people, and he will follow me as your God, as your ruler, as your king. But then they started to be like, oh, I like the way they did that, man. And man, when they did this, it was so cool. So they started to allow that into their lives. And because of their actions, there was a consequence. That consequence was of their actions was that the Lord was going to allow these other uh, 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 countries to invade them and rob from the Israelites. So they would steal all their food. It was like a bad case of a bully. And then Israel was so afraid of that. The Midianites. And, and, and they, they, they got to the point where they find this guy named Gideon in a wine press, not even making wine. He's getting wheat, meal, so he could get his harvest for his family. That's how afraid he is. Has anybody ever been afraid like that? 
where you're kind of just hiding this stuff, man. Like when you're the youngest child of four, you know, you learn how to eat quicker. You know, you, you learn how to do things a little different. You know, because then you don't want to get picked on. You know, and so Gideon found out a way that he could be able to get food for him, for his family by hiding in a wine press. And then this is where our story picks up. This is where God speaks to Gideon. And we find that in Judges chapter 6, verses 12 through 15. This is, then the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, You, I mean, the Lord, uh, the Lord is with you, violent, uh, violent warrior. Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened? And where are those wonderful, where are those wonders that our ancestors told us about? They said, hasn't the Lord brought us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and deliver Israel from the grasp of Midian. I am sending you, he said to him. Please, Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Look, my family is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's family. So in this moment, the Lord find, found Gideon, and he called Gideon a warrior. You see, there's something amazing about that. God doesn't see us how we are right now. God doesn't see us the way we think about ourselves. God doesn't even see us the way other people have thought who we were. You see, we live in a society that loves branding. The other day, I was laughing and I said, hey, guess what I'm going to wear? I had a Nike shirt on, I had Adidas shorts on, and I had Puma sandals on. <laughs> and I was like, babe, I'm going to walk out of this house so confused. <laughs> they were like, what? what? Who are you repping? And no one, and the, we got so used to being walking billboards for all of these companies that no one would ever have thought of different about me. No one would be like, bro, you can't wear that Nike. Sure, with those pulling the saddles, bro, what's going on? No one has said anything. But we've gotten so used to branding that that becomes us. There's some people who only wear bands. There's some people who only wear Nikes. Praise the Lord. Me, I wear whatever's cheapest. Yeah. Whatever I can find at Marshalls or at Ross, that's me. Man, sign me up. Even if it don't feel right, just throw some socks in there. It'll be all right. But we, 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 we're getting so used to these certain brands. When I was a kid, um, I, I went, and when I was in the, in the mid-90s, late 90s, almost 2000s, there was a time when Levi's were not as expensive as they are now. But they were still a little bit out of the reach at times. So we would wear, Walmart used to sell Wranglers. I think they still do. You would get a pair of Wranglers for 15 bucks. You would buy a pair of Levi's for like $35. So. Uh, I could buy two for the price of one. Amen. But it didn't have that on the pocket. And just that little, the arch that crosses, they're like, hey, what kind of pants are those? This same as yours. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, how come I don't see the size? Like this? Don't worry about my pants, man. <laughs> but branding has become such a big thing. Did you realize that we allow people to brand us? No. We allow people to say, hey, you're not good enough. We allow people to brand us and say, hey, you're never going to be anything more than you are right now. No. We allow people to say, all you're going to be is your past failures. No. We even let people brand us and say, 
say, you're just like your parent. Come on. And it depends on how your parents are. <laughs> but we allow people to brand us that way. And then in our mind, we think, well, this is who I am. You see, Gideon had a brand in his mind of who he was. And it didn't match up to who God said he was. God said, hey, violent, uh, violent warrior. He was like, who? I'm in a wine press, bro. Hiding that I don't get my lunch yet. There ain't nothing mighty or warrior about me here. And matter of fact, I'm the youngest in the family. And my whole family's weak and I'm the weakest. I'm not a warrior. But that's the beautiful thing about God. Is that we might have a perception of what, who we think we are. And the world might have a perception of who they say you are. But nobody can name you or brand you that didn't create you. That's right. Oh, that That's right. right. Come on. And we need to realize no matter what people call you at school, no matter what people call you in your family, no matter what people call you at work, that ain't who you are because Amen. they didn't make you so they can't define you. Romans 
chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Do not conform to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect God's will is. We have to be transformed. That's right. Our mind has to be made new. And the only way that's going to happen is not by positive thinking. It's not by a good TikTok video. The only way our minds begin to be changed is through the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God does not have an age limit. You don't have to say, I'm too young, Pastor, to read the Word of God. Or I'm too old to start reading the Word of God now. There is no age limit. Amen. But we just need to get it. And start reading it. So the Lord can then begin to tell us who He created us to be. One of my favorite scriptures is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. Instead, God has chosen what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. So you might not be a star student. You might not ever, we be honest, ever get a student in the world. You might not have been a student of the That's all right. Because God can still use you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Regardless if you're a student of the month or you or you ain't, God can still use you. Imagine this. When I moved to Bandy from Pomona, and I started going to Bandy, I went to Bandy High for about like two months. And I, I quit school. I, I realized that wasn't for me. I, I since then returned and I did graduate. Some guys graduate, stay in school, go get full, uh, go to college, all that good stuff. Uh, um, but when I went, they didn't have the same resource classes like they did with the money. When I went to the school here in Bandy, I was in the same classes with, with other kids who really needed extra help. And I was like, why am I in these classes, man? I just can't read. This guy needs someone to push him around. I don't belong here. So I was like, I'm out of here. I even asked to speak to the, 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 the school, I don't know what he was, superintendent. superintendent. And we went right across the street where we lived off of uh, Third Street. We went straight to the, 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 the school um, district. And I sat in front of this guy. And I told him, I, I need more help. I don't want to be in these classes. And he looked at me and my mom and he says, listen, Mrs. Del Cruz, your son has severe dyslexia. You can start signing up for disability now, but he's never going to graduate high school. And, and you just got to be okay with that. Doesn't mean you can't live a good life. And I was like, what the heck? So look, when I read that God can use the foolish things of the world, I'm, I'm as foolish as a guy. And you know, you heard me preach. But God can still use it. God can still use this mess to bring glory to his name. Amen. Jesus, hallelujah. And so we don't make we don't need to allow people to define us. So what? I might not be the tallest. My hair might not be the nicest. I might not be the smartest, but I'm still God's. Amen. And He loves me. Amen. And He calls me. Yes. And He gave me purpose. Yes. 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 So we see that in Gideon. And then something else happens. And this is going to be something that's going to happen in all of our lives. So Gideon, they went back and forth. Gideon was like, if this is true, God, give me a sign. You know, and he did this whole. Uh, give me a wet, a wet cloth, a dry cloth, let it be wet anywhere else. He went back and forth with all these things. God did all these miraculous things for him. It convinced him that God actually called him. Let's fast forward, okay? Then it gets to this part. The Lord speaks to, to, to the Lord speaks to uh, Gideon, and this is in Judges uh, 20, uh, 6, 25. 
And he says, I want you to tear down your father's statue of the God that your father worships on the Asher pole. And I want you to get a cap. I want you to do this at night. And before the morning comes, I want you to build me an altar. And I want you to sacrifice that cow on that altar. Now, something happened over the weekend. And those who were there know. And those who see the squirrel know who the squirrel was. But there was a squirrel this past weekend that stole a pair of shoes. In the morning, our fearless leader was a shoeless leader. And the shoes were missing. Praise God, somebody had a heart enough to let him use their sandals. Or he would have been walking around in his socks. But man, those squirrels love those converts, you know? They came out missing. It happens sometime in the night. Who, who not, whatever squirrel did this, they must have felt like Gideon on the night that he went to destroy his father's God. He had to sneak out. He had to get some help. Did, did the squirrel have any help? No. No? The squirrel didn't even have help, man. He was able to kill the shit by himself. Well, Gideon, he had to bring some help. He had some servants to come and help him do this thing. But imagine this. Gideon just received the call from God and now he's going to have to make a stand in his family. You see, sometimes God has called us and just because he called us doesn't mean that life is going to be on an easy street. There's going to be a moment in our lives, kids and adults, that we're going to have to take a stand for God. Amen. And even if it's some feathers, and even if it's going to make our family not happy with us, I have to make the stand for God. Amen. And I am sorry that I'm not sorry. Because I need to do this a little more. And so at this moment, I, it, it's in uh, Judges, just for the sake of time, I'm, I'm just going to give it, uh, I'm going to trust that you're going to do your due diligence. And you're going to read this. Just for the sake of time, I got 15 minutes before I come to a close. So uh, this is my third closing, okay? So, uh, but, but read this. Judges 6, 12 through 15. And this is when he tells him, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Judges 6, 25 through 26 and 30, uh, 28 through 30. So this is when he goes and he smashes this altar. He tears down the ashen tree. The Asher Pole. But because he did what God called him to do, it didn't mean like everything was going to go good for him. You ever heard someone say, just do the right thing and everything's going to be okay? And you did the right thing and nothing was okay? I should have just lied about it, man. I would have been better off lying. Now that I told the truth, now I get the mess that I'm in. Gideon did what God had called him to do, but yet he still had to face the city and his relatives for tearing down this false God. So listen, when God calls us, and he calls us, and he defines who we are, just because that moment happened doesn't mean your life is going to be on easy street now. There's going to be a moment where God is going to call you to stand up and be bold for the faith that you have. One of the hardest things I remember when I was young is how to go against the grain. That's hard. You know what I don't envy? I envy you guys for your energy. I know. I know. Believe it or not, parents. I know it seems like they don't have any. 
But when it really matters to them, these teenagers have a lot of energy. And I'm envious of that energy, but I'm not envious of the things that you guys have to go through. If I could have your energy without having to have your spot in life, that would be great. But I know in high school it's tough. In junior high it's hard. When everybody around you is saying things that you know you shouldn't be saying. When everybody around you is doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing. And this doesn't even only pertain to you. We as adults know that we can find ourselves in circles at our job that don't sit right. And it's hard to make that stand. It's hard to say, you know what, I'm going to stand for the Lord. Kind of. Maybe if no one's watching. But listen, there's going to be a moment where we're going to have to make that stand like you. He didn't do what God called him to do, regardless of the consequences. Sometimes we're going to have to make a stand with our family. You say, no, I don't do that no more. Why? Come on, man. No, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I, I, I gotta think about my life, and that's not who I am anymore. Right oh, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. That's, that's just who I am. We have to make that choice. Sometimes in school, we're gonna have to say, no. Nah. Everybody else is speaking on somebody, everybody else is harping on somebody. We don't have to jump in. We could be there and be like, hey, cool it, man. You didn't do anything because I'm go or something. But we know that these things happen. And we have to make a stand. We have to make a stand for the Lord. And we can't continue to just let things happen. I'm reminded of, of Daniel. You guys remember Daniel? Not of the wheelchair, but Daniel the lion's head? He had to make a stand. They made a decree that everybody had to bow down and worship the king at this time of Daniel. Too. And what was his faith? He got thrown into the lion's den. Now, that doesn't sound like a fun thing. I could have easily said it, like so many people you might know say this, well, God knows my heart. He could have bowed and worshipped and said, but I don't need it, guys. I'm just doing it because, you know, hey, I got a family to protect. But God knows my heart. And Daddy didn't do that. You know, I want to bend, I want to bow to only my God, the true God. And He made the stand. And that stand came with consequences. You know the story. If you don't know the story, Daniel didn't die. Yeah. He cuddled next to the lion and he fell asleep mm -hmm. together. There was another story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't do, they didn't go along. They said, no, I'll only worship my God. Yeah. They threw him in the fire, in the furnace. And the Lord saved them there. Reminds me of Peter. In Acts chapter 5, verse 29. It says, Peter said to Peter, the apostle said, we must obey God rather than people. Leads me to the last one again. He received the call. He stood up for what he knows to be right. But there's a moment where we're going to have to know who God is. And the only way we begin to know who God is when we begin to trust God, even in the hard circumstances. So people liked Gideon around this time. I don't know if he started to work out, if he started to take protein shake. I don't know. But apparently, he became a guy that people wanted to follow. And he got himself an army. And the Lord said, now go camp at this bank of the river because tomorrow you're about to have war. <coughs> so Gideon showed up with like 30,000 30, men, somewhere around that. Bunch of guys. And the Lord said, hey, Gideon, 
You got too many guys. He's like, what, Lord? You got too many guys, get it? You got to send some of these guys home. <sighs> what am I going to do? He said, well, just tell them, hey, if you're afraid, go home. And see if he leaves. You ever been in a fight? And they're like, hey, are you afraid you could go home? No? Me neither. Right. <laughs> you never been in a fight. Just a good guy. <laughs> so they made this call. Guess what happened? They took off and went home. You can find the you can find the story in Judges chapter seven, one through seven. So he cut his his army down big time, and he's like, man, we ain't got enough guys to fight this war. It's too many, and we're too little. And guess what the Lord said? We got too many men. What? He said, this is what you want to do. Go to the river and tell your men to drink. Whatever guy scoops the water up and brings it to his mouth, you keep him. Whatever man drops to his stomach and licks the water up like a dog, that's the one you say they need to leave. I would have said, that's the guy I want to keep. And when he's crazy enough to drink water like that, he's about to pan. But that's not the way the Lord sees it. Right? Have you seen a guy drinking water like that? You're like, hey, bro. I'm good. So it ended up being just 300 men. And then he goes, smart dog.